Hey everybody, what's up? It is Patrick from Magnetic Nerds, and today, in celebration of the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie, I am making Star-Lord's Iconic Blasters. Who? Star-Lord. You know who Star-Lord is. Never heard of him. There's three movies out. How have you not heard of Star-Lord? And just for those of you playing along at home, here's the material list for everything that I use to build this. The STLs for this print come to us by the way of Frosty 3 over on Thingiverse. I'm getting a lot better with how I orientate my prints, helping to eliminate crazy layer lines, but I still have to slice up larger pieces to fit on my print bed. With that come seam lines. To make all those nasty bits disappear, I use Bondo Glazing Spot Putty. First, at full strength to fill in the deeper seams. Then I diluted them with some acetone to coat the entire gun. And then, well, you guessed it, sanding and filler primer. Some of the larger, deeper seams were still showing, so I had to go through with yet another round of putty. And now finally, after an endless saga of sanding and filling, all those nasty gaps and seams and layer lines were finally gone. The next step was to add a little more realism to these guns. I drilled out the screw heads and then replaced them with real shiny metal screws. And now the painting journey can begin. The first stop for this process was silver. Each of the guns got a shiny coat of silver. The next stop in this painting process was masking. Why you may ask? Well, if you go and look at all the very many pictures of these guys on the internet, they're not entirely silver. So I had to mask off the parts that I wanted to be silver so when I'm spraying on a coat of flat black, they stay silver. Now you may notice as I'm peeling off all the tape that one gun has a pattern on the handle and the other one doesn't. Well, I was trying to recreate that carbon fiber weave you see on the various screenshots and I really didn't like how it was turning out. So I decided to discontinue that process and just go with a flat black handle. I know, I know, it is not 100% screen accurate, but I also know that I really don't care. If you're looking for a 100% screen accurate prop, this is definitely not the channel for you. The last stop in the painting journey, this epic saga of paints, is all the little details around the guns. The silver parts got silvered and the copper parts got coppered. We release new videos every week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay in the loop. Now, the real fun can begin, weathering. And I'm pulling out all of my tools in the toolbox to help weather this thing. Oil brushes, pigments, washes, you name it, I had it. To kick off the weathering process, I began by scuffing up both guns with a medium grit sandpaper. Then, as I like to do with any metallic finish, the silver parts got polished with some graphite. All the nooks and crannies got some grime in the form of a Starship-based sludge oil brusher. Mm -hmm. 
Then the whole body of each gun got a nice black brown wash because space is dirty. For the highlights, a silver oil brusher is the perfect tool to bring out all of those worn edges. And to add a little bit more realism and to simulate the effect of being pulled in and out of a holster, I used a sharp point of a spatula to scratch up the surface. <music> Lastly, I went over each gun with a metal slag pigment. This adds a rusty, grimy, exhaust stained appearance. And the last stop in this epic journey of weathering is to recreate the heat stress marks on the gun muzzles. I did a little research on the internet and came across a technique that I absolutely had to try. It involves thinning out a dark purple and a lighter blue. I mean, you want this paint super thin. It's basically a glaze. You start by painting on three coats of dark purple, each coat being shorter than the previous one. Your third coat of purple essentially will just be the tip of the gun muzzle. You then repeat this process with blue. However, you only need two coats of the blue. The goal here is to build up a gradient of the blue and purple. The final step in this process is to bring back the weathering. So in my case, a bright silver oil brusher and metal slag pigment does the trick. The science behind this whole process is that the tip of the muzzle will be the hottest, therefore having a lighter shade of blue. And the blue fades into dark purple as the metal cools and the heat dissipates down the muzzle. In my haste to do this part of the project, I f***ed it all up. I started with blue instead of purple, plus I went way too far down on the gun's muzzle. So I had to rub off some of the blue with some mineral spirits. That unfortunately cleaned off all the nice weathering I just laid down. So I had to go back and re-weather that whole section of the gun. However, that new layer of weathering combined with the residual blue left over actually added to the guns. This just proves there are no mistakes when it comes to art, only happy little accidents. We are now at that point in the video where I like to show you my final sexy shots. Well, at the end of the day, this was a super fun and rewarding project. It was one of those things where I had to muscle through some mistakes. I had to learn some new skills. And to me, that's very rewarding. In the business of prop creation, you should never stop learning and never stop pushing the boundary. And with all that said, I'm gonna try something again that's a little new. Bye.